Welcome to one of SARS's webinars. Uh, today we're talking about the COVID-19 SME tax relief. Um, I'm Franz Tomasek. I look after legislative policy here at SARS and I'm joined today by a number of panelists, both from our legal and systems teams who are going to be helping you navigate your way through some of the key relief that was announced. Now, if I look at the history here, um, actually feels like a very long time ago when the president announced on the 23rd of March the three key initiatives that will form the foundation of what we're talking about today and those were the expansion of the employees tax incentive the deferral of uh, pays you earn or employees tax and the deferral of provisional tax um, that was followed shortly afterwards by a media release where the minister of finance expanded on those and then on the 1st of April, we released the first batch of draft legislation. Uh, on the 21st of April, the President then announced a number of expansions to the relief that had already been announced. And that was again followed up by a media statement by the Minister of Finance and a set of explanatory notes on the 25th of April. So as you can see, a fair amount for you to keep up with and for us. And then on the 1st of May, uh, we released the revised draft legislation. Uh, those of you who are looking at a calendar will have noticed that a number of those dates fall on weekends. So yes, we have been working on weekends and the public holidays to get this out to you. We, we try and do that as quickly as we can. And behind the scenes, our systems colleagues have been working very hard to get the systems up to date so that we can actually implement on time. Um, now, just some house rules. Uh, we are not going to have questions during the session because uh, that would interrupt the flow of discussion, but we do have a facility for you to give us questions. And if we have time at the end of the event, we will be taking some of those questions. Um, this email address to use is sarswebinar at sars.gov.za. Um, the presentation will be made available on our website, so if you miss something, you can get back to it and have a look at it. And we're also going to be making the webinar available on our social media channels so that you can go rewind and just check if we missed something or if there's something that you need to cover, uh, cover again. We're thanking you for your participation. It's great to have you with us, even if it's in the virtual space. And so I think that's enough from me. Welcome again, and I'm going, I'm going to hand over to John Hansen, who looks after our small business portfolio on the legal side. My name is John Hansen. I'm from the legal uh, aspect of the business, and I uh, look at the SMME segment. And uh, just to start off, as we know, the result of this COVID-19 has had a major impact on the world, the economy. It's a large-scale disruption of uh, work due to illness, lockdown, isolation, quarantine. As we know, the SMME segment of any country in the world plays a significant factor in terms of GDP, in terms of job creation, the labor market, and if that sector is affected, it affects many, many people in terms of the overall economy as well. And another aspect to remember for the SMME sector, cash is key. Without cash, these small businesses cannot survive. They do not always have access to the funding that the bigger companies do. And a lot, as you will see going forward in terms of the tax relief, speaks to deferral of tax obligations uh, in some or other form in a way to assist with cash flow. So you will hear how the provisional tax, the POI and the ETI is there to assist in terms of the deferrals. However, before we move to that, I also just want to bring to your attention that in existing legislation, we do have current tax exempt, uh, incentives that you can look at as well if you qualify and you have not yet considered them. Just to briefly mention two, the first one is turnover tax or presumptive tax for micro businesses. This incentive is uh, available for individuals and companies where you have a qualifying turnover of less than one million. It is an administrative ease of uh, way of doing business with SARS instead of having to do dividends tax and capital gains tax uh, and even an election of whether you want to be in the VAT space or not. You can register for micro business and it is a very simple way of doing taxation. 
The benefit of that is you pay tax on what is called a taxable turnover, and where that taxable turnover is not in excess of 355,000 rand a year, you do not pay tax. So there are things on the books that can be of assistance where you do not need to pay tax from the first rand. The second incentive is for the more formalized corporates, which is called small business corporations or SBCs, section 12 cap E of the Income Tax Act. And if you meet certain requirements, shareholding limitations, and the type of service that you provide, and you qualify for this incentive, unlike the flat corporate rate of 28% that kicks in at the first one rand of taxable income, uh, you are subject to graduated tax rates much as is the case with PIT, the more you earn, the more you pay. However, in the case of SBC, the first 83,100 Rand is not subject to tax as a result of, uh, let's call it a tax rebate. So you can be in a loss situation or you can have taxable income all the way up to 83,100 Rand without paying tax. And the 28% maximum tax rate, which is currently a flat rate for corporates, only kicks in for SBCs at a taxable income of 550,000 Rand. So those are on the books. Consider the options. Uh, yes, we are making relief provisions in the draft bills, as we're referred to now, but there are also existing incentives on the books to assist in terms of cash flow, paying less tax, and to relieve uh, the tax burden on the SMME segment. And I think. Uh, Having said that, to just give a bit of a background, we will now move into the specific uh, items in terms of the tax relief in the draft legislation <coughs> that is out for uh, comment at the moment. And I hand over to my colleague, uh, Reni Naidu, who will give you an overview of uh, PIT and PAYE as far as the tax relief is concerned. Good morning. Um, thank you, John. I'll provide you an overview of the COVID-19 tax relief for Pays UN. So like it was indicated, I'll provide an I-level overview. For more uh, detailed information, please um, uh, read our SARS website, which has quite uh, a lot of comprehensive information on COVID-19 tax, tax relief. So for Pays UN, the first um, entry point is your qualifying criteria. So a taxpayer, um, a qualifying taxpayer is a taxpayer that conducts a trade and must have gross income of 100 million or less and that gross income must not include more than 20% in aggregate of passive income. Your passive income is then your interest, your local and foreign dividends, royalties, uh, rental from letting of fixed property, and any remuneration from an employer. There are certain exclusions. So if your primary trading activity is, um, um, is a rental of fixed property, when we carry out the test of 20%, uh, your, that um, a trading activity will be excluded. Secondly, if you're a partnership, because an employer can, is recognized as a partnership for tax purposes, to determine the gross income, uh, you must use your aggregate partners, uh, uh, partnership gross income. And then thirdly, your micro businesses, and that's your normal requirements, as set out in the sixth schedule. Okay? So that's your first criteria. Your second criteria, and which is very important, the taxpayer must be tax compliant. Tax compliant means no outstanding tax um, returns and no outstanding tax debt. If, they, if you do have an outstanding tax debt, it must be subject to an installment payment agreement, or it must be suspended, or it must be less than 100 rand. Okay? And thirdly, if um, 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 a taxpayer must be registered for all required taxes. So, for example, VAT, income tax, um, um, uh, employees tax, if, it, if those taxes apply, uh, applies to you, you must be registered for those taxes. The tax relief is the deferral of your pay as you earn payments. So the tax periods is April, May, June, and July. When calculating your, 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 your pay as you earn liability, you follow the normal rules. You will, uh, Calculate, uh, determine remuneration, calculate the pays you earn according to the current tax scales, and declare that full liability on your EMP 201 return. So with the COVID-19 tax relief, uh, if you're a qualifying taxpayer, you will only pay 65% and 35% will be deferred. 
The deferred payment, the deferred of 35%, will be paid in equal installments over a six-month period. This slide reflects an example. And as you see, for the month of, uh, for the tax period of April, if a taxpayer pays you in liabilities 150,000, the 65 payable is 97,500, and the 35% uh, deferred will be 52,500. Okay, and as you can see on the slide, the cash flow benefit for those four months, using this example, is uh, 210,000. Your 65% must be paid as per the due date. So the due date for April 2020 was yesterday, the 7th of May. The deferred uh, six months will be then spread, uh, will be spread over equal six months um, uh, repayment, commencing from the 7th of September. You can see that on the slide as well, and equal uh, payments is, uh, will be required. So the, the deferral of the 35% as per the COVID tax relief no penalties and interest will be imposed. A summary then for the pay as you and COVID-19 tax relief. You must meet the qualifying criteria, which is gross income of 100 million or less. Your passive income must not be more than 20% in aggregate. You must be tax compliant and you must be registered by the 1st of March 2020 with SARS. The tax periods, April, May, June and July, the COVID-19 tax relief, pay 65% of your total pays you on liability on or before the due date. Deferred th the remaining 35%. The deferred uh, pays you on liability is payable over a six month period commencing from 7th September and the last payment will be 5th February 2021. And no penalties and interest will be imposed on these deferred amounts. The next um, discussion is your skills um, development levy, SDL. So for the tax periods May, June, July, employers have a 100% exemption on the SDL payment. So no payment must be made for, for these four months. And um, on, the, on the EMP 201 return, the, uh, the container will be grayed out, so it's not required for the employer to declare any amount for SDL. Okay. Please bear in mind that the SDL holiday, holiday exemption only commences for the, from the tax period May. The next discussion is Employment Tax Incentive, ETI. So the qualifying criteria for ETI, the employer must have been registered with SARS as at 1st March 2020. And secondly, must be fully tax compliant. Like I stated earlier on, tax compliant means no outstanding tax returns, no outstanding debt. If there is an outstanding debt, please approach SARS and either conclude an installment payment agreement or conclude an agreement to suspend the debt, or unless the debt is less than 100 rand, there's no need to approach SARS. And, and, and as well, maybe ensure that you registered for all uh, required taxes. So your COVID-19 tax relief for ETI it can be broken down into four categories. The first category is your, is your first 12 months. And as you can see on the screen, uh, the expanded ETI is reflected in red. For your first 12 months, if your employee is earning less than 2,000 Rand, um, the incentive is an additional 750 plus your current, and your cu current is your 50% of your monthly remuneration. Likewise, for the next category, additional 750 as well, which is a total of 1,750. And your third category is a formula, and as well there, we have included an additional 750. For the second 12 months, very similar in all three categories. The expanded ETI is, is an, an uh, added amount of 750 Rand. Your third category, which is a completely new category and only applicable for the tax periods of April, May, June, July, and your, and your first category is for employers between from the age of 18 to 29 years that have exhausted the 24-month period and meet all other criteria, an employer can claim, an, can claim 750 rand, which is the expanded ETI for these, uh, for, for the, for these employees. So for, less than four, for, uh, for salary less than 4,500, 750 rand, and likewise, 
when you're above the range of 4,500, the formula will apply and the expanded ETI amount is as well 750. This expanded ETI um, um, uh, applies to a fourth category and these are for employees from the age of 30 to 65 years and as well meet all the other ETI criteria. The same expanded ETI amount will apply, which is the additional, which is the um, 750 rand. Just to emphasize, the tax, the tax period is April, May, June, July. We did receive some public comments that payroll was not ready to, um, um, uh, to increase it to 750 rand. When the draft bill was published on the 1st of April 2020, um, the expanded ETI reflected an amount of 500. And subsequently, after public comments, this was increased to 750. We did receive certain public uh, comments from certain payrolls that indicated they are not able to expand um, um, uh, 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 or amend their payroll to implement the 750 rand. If a payroll cannot implement it in, in uh, could not have implemented it by April, they can then claim the difference in the May EMP 201. So just to reiterate, claim the five, you could, can claim your 500 in the April EMP 201, and in May you claim the, the 250 rand that was not claimed. So a summary for, um, for um, a pays you and, and ETI. It's applicable for the tax periods April, May, June, July. Step one, calculate your 100% pays you and liability. Step two, determine the 65 and 35% split. Step three, calculate the total ETI amount for that period, plus add any unused ETI amount carried forward from a previous tax period. Step four, set off the ETI, ETI amount against the 65% pays you and liability. Step five, if the pay, pays you and liability is greater than the ETI, ETI amount, payment to source required. Step six, if the ETI amount is greater than the pays you and liability, source will then refund that ETI amount within one to 10 working days from submission of your EMP 201 uh, return. So to explain that in an example, so this is an example of pays you and ETI, and I'll focus on the tax period for April. The gross pays you and liability is 10,000. The 35% deferral is 3,500, and the 65 payable before ETI is 6,500. So the ETI calculated is 11,000. Your ETI utilized is limited to your 65%, which is 6,500. And the unused ETI amount of 4,500 4, will then be refunded by SOS within 10 working days. So th this is an, uh, a snapshot of the ETI summary. Again, to emphasize, you must be tax compliant. You must meet the qualifying criteria, which is um, uh, must be registered with SOS as at 1st March 2020. Comply with existing rules and expanded rules of ETI, and it applies to the tax periods April, May, June, and July. I will now hand you over to my next colleague who will discuss uh, COVID-19 tax relief for provisional tax. Thank you very much, Reni. Uh, my name is Natin Lele, and I'll be taking you through the provisional tax uh, relief. I thought it would be important to emphasize that the principles of provisional tax have not changed which means that you still need to do your estimate properly as, we, as the law requires you to do. Just to kick off, the criteria are basically similar to the PAYE criteria, that it must be a taxpayer that is conducting trade and also have a, a gross income of 100 million and below. That gross income basically must not include more than 20% of the aggregate of the interest, local and foreign dividends, royalties, and rental from letting of property. But there is one basically proviso. If, you, if basically the rental income from the fixed property is, is the main income, you take the full basically uh, 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 gross income. You don't exclude the 20% of, of rental of income. For micro businesses, basically, also they qualify, and we know that they are defined in um, uh, 
the sixth schedule of the Income Tax Act. The second criteria is what Brandy has already explained, is that you must be tax compliant. And she's already explained that. Uh, I won't go through it again. Now getting to the actual relief for provisional tax. The first provisional tax period must fall within April 2020 and that is uh, September 2020. The relief for the first period uh, is that you can only pay 15% of the, the total liability. Currently, you're supposed to pay, or, or the law requires you to pay only 50%, but now you can pay on, only 50%. With the second uh, uh, provisional tax period, uh, it must fall within April 2020 and 31st March 2021, and you, you can only pay 65% of the total li liability. Of course, you will deduct your first provisional tax that you would have paid. The, 35% that is deferred, you must pay that by the third uh, period. Uh, and then it's important to note that the penalties and interest is not applicable to the deferred amount. That's include also paragraph 20. But please note, however, that the section 89 quad interest will be applicable if you do not pay your uh, provisional tax by the effective date or the debt payment. This is basically the example uh, to show you how this thing is going to work. I'm not going to go through it. You can go through it basically at a spare time and then you can send uh, questions later if there's something you're not clear about, but the principles are still exactly the same except the relief that I've explained. Now just to recap for provisional tax. The criteria basically is that you must be conducting trade and the gross income must be 100 million or less. It must not include more than 20% of the aggregate of passive income, which you have explained uh, already, and you must be tax compliant. While talking about tax compliant, it's important that you pay your 15% for the provisional tax on time, and you must also pay your 65% provisional tax on time so that you do not lose the relief. The tax period, as I've mentioned, for the first provisional tax, it must fall within 1 April 2020 to 30 September 2020, for the second provisional tax period, it must fall within 1 April 2020 to 31 March 2020. The summary of the relief again, just to emphasize, for the first period, instead of paying 50% of the total liability, you can pay only 15%. For the second period, instead of paying now the 100% of the liability, you must pay only 65% of the liability, 65% of the liability, and the 35% is deferred and it must be paid by the third a, a, a payment. There are no penalties that are charged on these deferred amounts, including paragraph 20 penalties. I will now hand over to Rosemary, my colleague, who's going to take you through basically the high level discussion from the process and the system point of view. Good morning, my name is Rosemary. I'm going to take you through the process of submitting the MP201 and IRP 6s. So on the slide that we have here, we are requesting the taxpayers to first check their compliance status before they submit their returns in order to um, qualify for a percentage of 65% or 15%. So we also attach the, the example of the statement of our account for, for pay to end side and the IRP6 side so that you can see how the statement of account will look like. We also added um, information where we emphasize in that there is no need to apply for a, a pay to end or provisional uh, a tax relief. SARS will determine that for you, will do the calculation. We have the email address that you can use where you need additional deferment, which is um, for debt management and also from excise side, capital and tax or LBC, you need to communicate with your relationship managers. We also added a um, taxpayer education program where you, um, you can go through and check on our website to see what needs to happen, where is the information, or how to go on the to check your status. I will now hand it over to TV. Thank you, guys. Um, as, as you can see, from all the tax reliefs um, that have been offered, the requirement is that you need to be tax compliant. 
Um, so for you to be tax compliant, um, as we already said, you need to submit your returns. Um, so your returns must be up to date or you also have to have paid your debt or made a, um, a settlement or a payment arrangement. So all these things can be found on our website. Um, because of social distancing, we are not um, opening our branches. So, so if you need um, help on, on e-filing or, or how to submit your return, we urge you to go to our website. Um, we have a, a page called um, COVID-19 information. Go in there um, and you'll find um, details on how to, to, to be test compliant or all other information that we've, we've, um, we've just alluded to today. Um, we also um, require um, taxpayers to understand that SARS has um, entered into a segmented approach, meaning that we are going to be concentrating on SMEs and different types of segments um, within, within our taxpayer base. Um, and this is, first, this is the first of our um, um, kind of webinars. So this is the one about, about tax reliefs. We're going to be rolling out more webinars to teach our taxpayers about how to become tax compliant and the different products that we have um, uh, and basically educate our SMME base. So we just want to thank everyone who's been part of um, this initiative. It's a good initiative that we started with. Um, and we hope to do much more. And if you would require anything, please, we urge you visit our website or call our call center and the information is on our website. Thank you. So perhaps something just to share whilst uh, we're, we're working on that. And uh, as I say, technology sometimes isn't our best friend and, and this is one of our early webinars. We, we don't seem to have any questions, uh, which I must say is a little surprising. Um, but just to bring you on board on a, a recent development that you may be aware of or may not be aware of, on the first, on the 4th of May, so Monday of this week, the Minister of Finance uh, issued a direction which indicated that com an essential financial service includes a service required to comply with your tax, customs or excise obligations. So what does that mean? That means that for that purpose, you are permitted to travel and to go into the office. Um, this should assist you if you need to do that to complete your tax return, to file a set of excise or cu uh, customs accounts. Um, obviously, we would still encourage you to do as much as you possibly can from home and to maintain the social distancing. But where it is essential for you to go into the office uh, for a, your tax practitioner to visit in order to get information, that is now possible. So again, um, that is available on our website, so you should be able to see just what the wording is. Um, now I do have a question, and the question is, can we have clarity on the SDL holiday? Um, when can we start? Well. Um, the answer to that is actually very simple. So as you will have heard, we began with the pays you earn and ETI relief for the April tax period. And that was the period that you should have filed for yesterday. The SDL relief commences with the May tax period. So that is the tax period that you will be filing for on, if I remember correctly, the 5th of June, um, because the 7th falls on a Sunday. Uh, and so that is when you will be able to see that you get a grayed out feel for SDL because we're not expecting SDL contributions in June. So I hope that resolves that particular question. Are there any others? That seems to be it. Um, so, oh, no, I have a laptop being brought to me. So there's a dispute pending and there are outstanding penalties and interests that need to be waived. Do I still qualify for the 35%? So, um, if you have a dispute pending, I presume what you have done is you have lodged a request for suspension of payment. If you have done that um, and SARS hasn't gotten back to you, the law provides that that suspension automatically comes into force, so you're good. Um, of course, SARS will then consider your request for suspension of payment uh, as a because you're entering into a dispute. And 
Um, we will then notify you whether that suspension is granted or not. If it is not granted and you do not pay, then clearly you would be in default. Uh, if we've granted you the suspension, then all is good and uh, you should be okay as far as the 35% deferral is concerned. So there's an issue of access to technology for SMMEs. Um, is there something more than we can do than uh, the website? So does anyone want to venture a thought on that one? Um, I must admit with the advent of smartphones, uh, the barrier to entry has become a lot lower with respect to access to our website and, and things like that. Um, but again, I would suggest that if you have specific questions, uh, the, the call center would be available to assist you with answers on those. Um, but yes, uh, something that I suppose doesn't really assist if you have a complete barrier to technology. We have mentioned that our branches are closed to the public. That is generally true. It is possible to make an appointment. Um, that is something that we try to make an exception rather than the rule. Uh, but that option is also available if necessary. So if you're not tax compliant, will I get assistance to be compliant? I suppose that depends on the nature of the non-compliance. John, do you want to venture an answer there? Yes, it depends on what the compliance is. There are three tests. Are you registered for taxes that you should be registered for? So the big three, income tax, VAT, PAYE. If you are not registered, you can register on the e-filing platform. If you have outstanding tax returns, you need to submit those returns as quickly as possible. And if you have outstanding tax debt, uh, you'd either need to pay it, or if you cannot pay it off in one shot, you can apply to SARS for a deferment installment plan where you can pay it off, although you will still pay interest thereon. And if you have tax debt that has not been paid because you're in a dispute or you intend lodging a dispute, as has been mentioned, you can apply for a tax debt suspension. So if you meet the requirement of being a taxpayer, you have submitted your tax returns and you have outstanding tax debt, but it is subject to a payment plan or a suspension, you will then be compliant and therefore you will qualify for this tax relief. It's obviously early days for all of us and um, thank you for those brave souls who decided to put their hands up and ask the questions. Sometimes it is a bit daunting to be the first person to do it. Um, I know that's usually the case when we're meeting in person. Uh, nobody wants to be the first speaker and it seems that carries over into the virtual world as well. So thank you to those who've asked the questions. Thank you to my fellow panelists for all the hard work that's gone into preparing for this um, and to the people behind the scenes who've been working really hard to make this happen. Thank you to you too. Um, and then really the biggest thank you is to you out there, the taxpayers of South Africa. Uh, you make it possible for government to respond to this pandemic. Um, you are the people who make it possible for government to do the work that it does. So thank you for being compliant. Thank you for paying your taxes on time. We realize it's tough out there. Um, you merely have to drive around and, and you can see the impact that this is all having on us. You can, listen, you can watch the daily updates we're getting. You can see the impact here and around the world. It's tough out there. We appreciate that. We're trying to help. And uh, thank you very much for everything that you're doing.